<laughs> Hi friends. All right, this is part two. And today we're gonna to be talking about uh, something called posture breaking. But first we wanted to, first of all, talk a little bit about why this style of martial arts, and then to add an exercise that builds on last week's. So the why is because there's, we can roughly maybe break martial arts into striking arts and grappling arts. And that's a gross oversimplification, but the striking arts is something we do too, but the, the liability of the striking arts is that for a strike to be effective, in general, it has to hurt someone. And there's, there's two main reasons why that's not such a great thing. A is that, at least in my personal experience, there are very few moments in life when it is appropriate or necessary to actually cause harm to someone else. And it's much more likely to, for instance, have a friend who gets out of control because he's drunk or really angry, over angry, and is attacking somebody else. These grappling arts allow us to mitigate a potentially violent situation and to do it without actually harming somebody. No blood, no bruises. It's, so in that way, it's much more gentle and peaceful while also being really effective at often stopping an aggressor more quickly than that punch or kick sometimes can. <laughs> Are you teasing me over here? No. <laughs> number two is that it's been said wisely by a number of people that a, a fight can be broken into three situations or three parts. <laughs> we have an audience over here. <laughs> the first part is the, the build up or the lead up to a situation when aggression is building but there's not a actual physical confrontation yet. That's when a situation can be verbally de-escalated. Then there's the actual physical fight or confrontation. And then the third part, which often people don't think about, is the court fight, the court battle that happens after that. And today, more than ever, this world is filmed everywhere. So your likelihood of being caught on camera are is quite high which means that if you somebody comes up to you and gets in your face and you break their nose it's probably not going to go really great for you in court if you are grappling and one of the beautiful things about that is somebody has to you actually want people to come lead into you often so letting that person come in and then going down you become the non-aggressor and it looks a lot better for you in court if you're wondering why I'm messing with my lips, it's really cold. It's really cold. It's really cold out. <laughs> and and so they're really numb. Your lips are numb. <laughs> I'm having trouble even talking. <laughs> <laughs> You've been out too long. <laughs> oh my god. That happens to me too. Yeah, I've been. I've been doing videos sometimes and my lips get so cold that I try to talk with my death. <laughs> I have to sit there trying to rewarm my lips up so I can talk to the camera. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So last week we had these these balance lines. And we can draw those. And Here, our this piece of corn right there. <laughs> Remember I draw them on with Yeah, I know, but nonetheless, animations. why not just do it with pieces of cord. So, <laughs> so the. <laughs> no, it's over. It's over too hard. You do look funny. I do, yeah. <laughs> I bet my the, So, the exercise last week is we were just learning to see these where they are and then push each other. Well, here, boom. Here, we're going to switch around the game a little bit. We're going to say just one person is going to be the mover and the other person is going to be the. Stander. So I'm going to stand here with my balance line. And what she's going to do this time, she's going to try to follow my balance lines and to keep moving me. 
So why don't you come on in towards me? Good. And she moved me there, and then here, and then here, there. Good. And that's the first way to do it is you kind of saw how she pushed me and then she adjusted herself. Now this time, so that would be the first exercise because that just teaches us to notice where they are. The second time we're going to set up same way, but this time you can go slower if you want so people can really see this. As she pushes me, she's going to try to move into position trying to anticipate where my balance line is going to move so that instead of pushing and then stepping into a new position and pushing, she's going to push and be in position for the next okay. push. I'm sorry. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. so do it slowly so people can see. Oh, I did not expect that one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that kind of. So yeah, that was great. You can actually add more to this by starting to also pull. Can I push you a little bit? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I start here and I push and I pull and I can come backwards and I can start to keep moving her. Oh yeah, you're really controlling And dancing her. And ideally, me as the pusher, I want to feel stable based all the time instead of feeling like I'm off balance. So I want to keep myself as the balance and see if I can start to get where I'm flowing her around and moving her. If you are the person being moved, the key is not to resist a lot at this point, is just to set myself strong in this balance line. But if I'm pushed off of it, to allow myself to reset that balance line. We're building up to be able to Ideally, come up to somebody and real quick oh, feel where their balance yeah, line is and move them okay. off their balance so we can take them down in forward or upside down position, wherever we want them. But to be able to do that, we want to build up this awareness of where the balance lines are and how we manipulate them. Okay, look at the clouds, just don't mean to interrupt, but like moon and moon Okay, check out the clouds. <laughs> <laughs> There's two important things to remember as we graduate to this next exercise. The first is the concept of tapping out. Now, when you're doing this with anybody, the idea is that if someone taps you, then you're going to release all pressure. So whether I'm doing a choke, I am pinning somebody, they have me in an uncomfortable situation. If they tap, we release, we're both going to stand up or get back into whatever starting position we were at and then re-engage consciously. But we are not going to continue applying the pressure. This is a way to be able to get into uncomfortable situations but have an instant way to release. The second thing is to understand the difference between smooth pressure and ballistic pressure. And when we're doing any kind of ground fighting, eventually we want to be in command of some really good ballistic pressure. That's the ability to very quickly apply pressure in a way that is going to jerk somebody into position. Right now, that creates potential for injury, especially now when we're doing this next exercise where we're manipulating the cervical spine and things like that. We want to get used to, right from the beginning, using smooth pressure. That means when we put our hands on the person's chin, we're going to apply smooth, consistent pressure. If I'm going to increase that pressure, I'm going to increase it slowly and smoothly. I'm not going to jerk it. That also means that as a person that's resisting, that I have to be aware that people aren't using that ballistic pressure and have to respond appropriately. So if someone's pushing like this, it's maybe easier for me to find a way to slide around and get out. If they're holding me well and I feel like I could jerk out, that's going to be very different than finding that sliding way to get out. So making sure that everything I do on both sides is smooth pressure. How are those lips doing? No. Yeah. All better. <laughs> okay. Posture breaking is the next part of this. And the whole idea here is that if you turn around once, we know we have a spine, the cervical spine, and runs all the way down 
to our tailbone essentially. When our spine is straight, and especially when it's slightly forward, we're in a good, strong, strong position. When my spine is out of alignment, my cervical spine out of alignment, when I'm back arched like this, or too far over like this, when that spine is out of alignment, it weakens the whole body structure. So for instance, if I'm trying to push really hard with this arm in my and I'm torqued like this, I'm not gonna be able to exert the same amount of force. So, <laughs> so oh posture God. breaking means to that- To break the, um, cord, the spinal thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Spinal coordination? Yeah, that, that- uh, uh, Lining. Alignment, yeah. Oh, there that really good alignment or posture of the spine. So, if, I mean, a classic example is is the headlock, the classic headlock. So that classic headlock that you'll see, you know, performed on the schoolyard is just holding me down like that. And that's fine, except I have my spinal alignment and I can just lift up. Basically. Not really an effective way to hold somebody. Now, if... As she goes here, she pulls up this way and torques my neck. Now when I try to lift up, <clears throat> it's a lot more effort for me. She's taken my spinal alignment, she has twisted it, and that creates a completely different level of strength for me, a much lower level of strength. And all she had to do was torque that rather than let me be straight. So it's the same thing if we are on the ground, wrestle about a little bit. <laughs> okay, so here, she kind of put herself into an unaligned position right yeah, away here. Not smart of me. Yeah, and so me. by grabbing her and keeping her unaligned, <laughs> I can keep her really, really weak. I forgot to mention, this really helps with acrobatics. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> now, if she can get her I alignment back. Just doing BJJ. <laughs> so get your alignment back. Once you're, yeah, naturally she wants to return into this more aligned position. Mm -hmm. Then you're stronger, right? Yeah. Right? And here, right away, if I just twist this way, wow, what happened to your strength? Not really do anything. Yeah. So there, by posture breaking, by breaking her posture, I have a great, great advantage. And this can give you an advantage over someone who's stronger than you if you know how to break posture. Yeah. And they don't. Now, there are later down the road, as we turn these basic exercises into a more self-defense oriented thing. We're gonna talk about things like the nostril hook and eye hooks and the fish hook and other methods to specifically the cervical spine to move the head in order to, hair pulls, in order to move the head where we want it. But right now, especially if you're training with children, we wanna keep this really safe and basic. So we're just gonna use the chin and the forehead and the cheeks as our movement points, knowing that we are gonna trade those off later in training. But right now, those are the main ones we're gonna use. So as we're wrestling here, we're gonna play maybe that same game that we were playing, talked about last time, which is who can be on top. But now she's going to use posture breaks on me. And my neck is strong enough that if she wanted to really posture break me, she would have to use the eye or the nose or something else in order to hook and move that. But when she pushes on my chin, I'm going to resist a little bit. Again, we're trying to build strength. I'm gonna resist a little bit, but allow her to move that. And then I'm gonna feel myself weakened a little bit. And she's ideally gonna use that in order to get on top of the situation and dominate the wrestling match. Should we try it? Yeah, let's try okay. it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a cold day. I wonder if I can get 
went ice swimming. <laughs> ice dipping, I forgot. Yeah, you did go ice dipping, did you? <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> so here we are in top, and here, okay, she's using that posture break. And I can feel myself already weaken. And if she continues that, yep, and she was talking about those balance lines. Nice. Really, really good. Now it's fine if you're on the bottom to start to show a child how it works or your companion. So I might use it too. Same way. To create that posture break. So here she's pushing directly against my posture. That's not really going to do anything. There she's twisting me. Yep, and then let her feel where I'm weak. She was trying to push me that way, but can you come up over here once? You can see where my balance line is really, really strong here in that direction. So she's not going to be able to push me that way like last time, but she might feel a different way. And you can just let somebody feel it out. Maybe you let go of that posture break, so I'm not going to give it to her. She has to keep it. And then can you feel where I, my balance lines are not strong? No. Yeah, this is kind of a tougher one. Because back here I have strength. What about that way? Yeah. That was so really that's really hard for me to push that direction. Yeah, it sure is, isn't it? So this hand might just take over that posture break. And this hand might come around that side. And pull me down and over. Feel that? Yeah. And come right over on top of me? Yeah. Can you feel how that would work? Yeah. Yeah. So then again, now you can see how these two exercises work together. I'm going to try to posture break her and then feel where she's weak. <laughs> and we're just going from one person on top to the next person on top. <laughs> I like smush grass. <laughs> you posture break me once? Okay. Good. And then try to feel where you can get me off my balance line, where I'm weak. Yeah, and that's probably more. So here she's changing my balance line by taking away one of my bases. And that's kind of down the road. Absolutely fine if somebody does that. Where are you going to take me? And you gave me my posture back. I'm strong. Ah, okay. Good, good, good. Oh, I don't know. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, imagine you're going to put me in your lap. Yep, and sit yourself up as you do it. Oh, you're so happy. <laughs> good, keep your posture broken. Don't give me my posture back. Yeah. That's an important thing to remember about posture breaking. As soon as she gives me my posture back, then I'm going to have my strength back. So I'm always kind of going to be fighting to get that back. But if she can keep that broken, often if you just break somebody's posture, it's enough to create a submission situation. So here she's got my cervical spine posture broken, and she's also arched my back back so even though she's kind of in a vulnerable position for most people it's mentally going to be difficult to think beyond getting my posture back because this is so uncomfortable and so all I'm going to be doing is thinking of getting myself straight again and if she can keep me on straight then thank you <laughs> if she can keep me on straight then Let's do it nice switchy, I'm going to be in a and I'm going to ride it ready go <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> so keeping that posture broken is like it's a it's a power in itself. And the more you practice that and start to feel how that cervical spine can affect the rest of the spine, and you might find instances like there where you can get a person into an arch where they feel really really uncomfortable. So. Practice the balance lines, the posture breaks, and these exercises where they're starting to blend together. Share any thoughts, ask any questions, and we will keep these videos coming. They're oh, going to yeah. get...
tougher to do as the winter comes, at least outside. Yeah. We don't know if we're going to try to do them inside or what. We'll figure but that out. We're going to figure it out somehow. We gotta do it. Maybe we'll do it in the greenhouse. <laughs> in the greenhouse, yeah. <laughs> we awesome. the greenhouse. Thank you. <laughs> Your lips. <laughs> in a good house. Love to you all. Thanks for watching. We'll talk with you soon.